Now I'd like to ask President-elect Amy Canaveri to introduce today's program. Amy. Thank you, Scott. Good morning, everyone, or I guess good afternoon now. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, Deputy Mayor Steve Schaefer. Uh, we'll have his uh, speech. I'll talk to you about that. And then we'll have actually the mayor's state of the city afterward. And if time allows, we'll take questions via chat. So we've got a great program today. Uh, Deputy Mayor Steve Schaefer was born and raised right here in Evansville. He graduated from Modern Day High School and received his bachelor's degree in public affairs from IU and a master of public administration from the University of Southern Indiana. He's worked in the offices of the Indiana Representative John Hostetter, Hostetler, pardon me, and former Speaker of the House John Boehner. Mayor Lloyd Winnicky appointed Schaefer as his Chief of Staff after taking office in 2011, and in 2016, he became Evansville's first Deputy Mayor. Steve is currently serving as Chairman of the Reopen Evansville Task Force, a comprehensive community effort to address challenges impacting our city and developing a path beyond the COVID-19 crisis. Please join me in welcoming Deputy Mayor Steve Schaefer. Steve? Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm gonna try using technology to share my screen. Let's see if this works. Okay. Let's see. Can everybody see that? Okay, perfect. Uh, good morning, and, and thank you again for the opportunity to provide an update on the Reopen Evansville Task Force. Um, while Mayor Winnicky has remained focused on uh, tackling COVID-19 uh, with uh, in conjunction with our medical professionals, he wanted to also make sure that the city was ready to reopen when that time came. Uh, and obviously, um, as, as Amy mentioned, uh, a comprehensive community effort to address those challenges uh, impacting our city uh, and develop a path moving forward. So just to move forward a little bit. Uh, there you have the uh, reopen Evansville.com uh, web, the website, uh, which we said from the beginning was going to be a temporary site that we wanted to uh, consolidate information on reopening uh, because we hope to be out of this uh, in the near future. Um, and, but before we cover the task force itself, we, we really should look at COVID-19, the current situation briefly. Uh, let me see. It, some of you may have seen this, this chart before. Uh, this is uh, probably the best source of local information on uh, COVID-19. Uh, this is the Vanderbilt County uh, Health Department and they update this uh, pretty regularly, almost daily, I believe. Um, the main thing to take away from this, and obviously you probably can't see because uh, it's pretty small, but uh, there are currently, uh, as the last I checked, 32 current cases in Vanderburgh County. Uh, the important part uh, is to note that of the total number of cases, 154 have recovered. So um, that, that kind of gives you a snapshot in time in terms of uh, where it is. Um, we've, been a, we've been fortunate uh, to only um, to have low numbers. Uh, unfortunate, unfortunately, we've had two deaths in this community, so uh, we continue to monitor that. Let's see if I can move on. You've probably heard or seen uh, information about Governor Holcomb's back uh, on track uh, plan for reopening uh, the state. This is a popular chart that's made its, uh, made its way around uh, the state. Uh, there are five stages that are included. Um, I'll, I'll try to go through those pretty quickly so that we can focus more on uh, what's happening here. But there you can see the website, which has everything uh, pretty clearly, uh, very detailed guidance. Stage one, we can forget about that. We're, we're already in stage two. Um, and with stage two, uh, which started May 4th, most retail stores now open with limitations. Uh, restaurants opened yesterday with 50% capacity. Uh, in addition, uh, hair salons, barber shops, um, tattoo par parlors, a lot of the personal close contact businesses. And obviously this is pretty small print. This is simply 
the, the direct guidance from the state and the website is there. Because um, the goal of, of this presentation was actually being developed before Rotary um, asked for an update, but we want to have something on the website so that people can go to for specific guidance. So once we get into stage three, uh, that begins May 24th. Um, many places like retail stores have capacity that will increase to 75%. Uh, movie theaters, 50%, playgrounds, gyms. I got an email from my local gym today saying that they were gonna be opening uh, that week as well. Social gatherings with 100 people are allowed, uh, but obviously throughout these, the guidelines of social distancing and recommending masks is, is still in play. Uh, stage four, even more opens up, social gatherings of 250. Bars can open uh, finally uh, at this point, uh, and you see a, a relaxation of some of the capacity issues. And then stage five from the state, uh, basically everything uh, opens up. And um, obviously I didn't mention everything, uh, so that we can move on, but uh, a lot of detailed guidance. I think that the state, uh, as long as things progress in terms of trends, um, the state is planning for that July 4th opening. So our local task force uh, started with five areas of focus, uh, business assistance, workplace safety and testing, quality of life, uh, government operations, and food security. Uh, we've truly been blessed to have uh, an outpouring of help, um, and we'll go into each of those uh, areas of focus in a moment. But um, from the outset, uh, the mayor thought it was uh, important that we have our medical professionals involved in, in every, every step of the way. And because of that, Deaconess, St. Vincent, Ascension, uh, and Vandenberg County Health Department uh, have been uh, key partners as our uh, medical advisory group, which have been advising us throughout. Uh, communication is important. I think we all know that. Uh, we added this component uh, <laughs> shortly after we started the task force, simply to promote the efforts of what we're doing and to make sure everybody is aware. We were very lucky to have um, Spanish version included and um, if you go to the website, you can click on it so that the, the message is getting out there. Uh, we want to especially thank uh, Esperly Muha, um, Alfonso Vidal, and Abraham Brown for um, helping us with not only the website, but with all the, the uh, materials that we've been sending out. Uh, leadership Evansville uh, has a forum next week uh, where we're going to engage their leadership to get them involved in the cause and, and have more community discussions and bounce some ideas off of them as well. And then how-to videos. Uh, this is something that originated uh, just in about every single uh, area of focus. And um, I think in one of the, the, the business town halls uh, that the chamber um, was hosting, one of the manufacturers was like, we need some training videos in terms of some of our employees don't know how to put on a mask correctly, um, which, you know, uh, it makes sense. I mean, there's different types of um, regulations and in, 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 in types of masks that, that are out there. But this is one example of a mat of a video that the Vandenberg County Health Department and the Growth Alliance uh, put together. I'm not going to play it because it's um, uh, long, uh, but we'll be putting more videos out there. And I may have advanced too much. It's this technology. My apologies. Um, well, I'll just go with it. Uh, the focus groups. So I mentioned that there that we had those uh, business assistants. Tara Barney with the chamber has been fantastic. Uh, workplace safety and testing. Dr. Stephen Becker with the Stone Family Center for Health Sciences. Our quality of life group. Brian Holtz with the Parks Department. Food security, uh, Lisa Vaughn uh, with Junior League and City Council President Alex Burton uh, are, are coordinating that effort. Uh, Noah Stubbs within uh, Communications Director for the Mayor is, is heading up that team and Government Operations, I've, I've simply been coordinating. 
So we get to the first, the first uh, area of focus, business assistance. Um, you know, we went into it with trying to identify four main goals, identifying the negative impacts and challenges that are out there, connecting employers with uh, the resources, providing workshops, and, cre and developing creative solutions to help them out. So that process that we had with the Chamber of Commerce and the Small Business Development Center, who've been simply amazing throughout. Um, really the four main takeaways that we, that we heard from the surveys and the town hall meetings that, that, that were held with various sectors, um, uh, access and need of financial resources, no surprise, uh, access to PPE, whether it be gloves, masks, hand sanitizer, uh, an advanced notice of when things were going to happen, and specific industry guidance were the main takeaways. So as a result, resources were developed. Uh, the Chamber continues. If you go to their website, it's probably the best for any business or employer uh, to, to find a whole host of information. Um, they're setting up workshops, peer groups, um, counseling with their business counselors with the SBDC. It's, it's, it's tremendous service. Uh, PPE sources, we have uh, vendor lists uh, to connect um, businesses with that, that offer those at reduced costs. Uh, financial help, there's uh, links on there that, that explain the different programs that exist locally and at the federal level. Uh, regional promotion. You probably saw the welcome back signage that the mayor and other regional leadership uh, unveiled, I believe last week. So trying to do as, as much as we possibly can to help support uh, businesses in the region. Okay, uh, the next area, uh, workplace safety and testing. You may have seen in the news, uh, the, the testing program that was announced, uh, Dr. Stephen Becker uh, and many of the medical professionals uh, made that announcement uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, the, main, the main goal of this, this area of focus is to determine the prevalence of the virus in the community and to provide employers with a uh, greater sense of um, comfort to reopen and to develop guidance and best practices. So that testing uh, program, if you go to this uh, later when this is uh, uploaded to our website, reopenevansville.com, uh, here's the video announcement of the prevalence study. And uh, Mayor Winicky uh, was just getting an update um, yesterday of testing that's happening in the community. So um, that project is, is ongoing. And I'll skip through that video. In addition, other resources as a result, specific guidelines, uh, best practices, also on here, uh, you'll be able to click later, that's a PDF. Uh, this frequently asked questions was developed by our hospitals locally, great source of information. Uh, and then testing site information as well from the state. The state has a site where you can simply put in the county, your location, and it'll pull up the closest testing sites if you have symptoms. Professional cleaning, that's another, um, another item uh, that, that businesses specifically were asking about. Uh, we have a list of local resources. Uh, there is also guidance from the CDC on how to properly clean uh, an office or a specific um, place of employment. Uh, and the same information is on the Indiana Department of Health as well. And all of these are very detailed. It's amazing that all the step-by-step -step guidelines that, that are included. So the next area of focus, quality of life. And when you talk about quality of life, it's everything from reopening playgrounds to rescheduling major events. But we wanna make sure that uh, we're ensuring public safety, uh, but also bring back that sense of normalcy to our lives. Parks, pools, and playgrounds. Uh, May 24th is when those uh, can technically reopen uh, with social distancing guidelines in place from the state. Our community pools, uh, as well, um, in some late breaking news, you probably heard uh, that Burdett Park uh, is not going to be opening this summer. Um, and due to uh, the shortage of lifeguards and the additional guidelines from the state, uh, unfortunately, the city will be making a similar announcement um, later today. Uh, sports and fitness. 
Uh, golf courses are open. So that, that has some good news. I know there's a lot of golfers out there. Um, Deaconess Sports Park and Gable Soccer Fields, June 14th is when uh, those facilities can reopen. Uh, local sport leagues. I don't know how many of you are a coach or have your, your kiddo on a baseball team, um, but they can start practice May 24th uh, in games on June 14th. And please realize this is the state. We're going by the state guidelines on all of this. Uh, gyms and fitness centers, May 24th is, is when they can uh, technically reopen. So cultural and entertainment facilities, Massacre Park Zoo, um, they, they have a plan in place. Uh, however, a date has not been announced. Uh, museums uh, and all those types of facilities, June 14th at 50% capacity. Wesselman Woods is also uh, to be determined. Um, and then one of the ones, the most popular questions that we get is bars and nightclubs. Uh, that's June 14th at 50% capacity. And I'd be remiss to say uh, the quality of life um, area focus has uh, a lot of individuals that are, represent facilities, whether it be Wesselman Woods, uh, the Ford Center, um, you know, the YMCA, all of those individuals uh, have been providing input. Tourism. This one is... Uh, uh, near and dear to my heart, simply because of uh, past experience with CVB and, and currently with the Evansville Sports uh, Corporation, uh, there's significant challenges ahead. Um, uh, Mr. Wood from the CVB uh, has shared some of the data and so forth. Um, you know, in March, I think uh, hotel occupancy was down almost 30 percent, uh, and obviously there's going to be some pain um, for you know months, months ahead. Um, with our major venues not, not able to open uh, until June 14th, uh, with 250 people or less, uh, they won't be able to fully open until July 4th. And that's the Ford Center, those, those big types of venues. Um, and then when you, but there is some good news uh, when you talk about sports tourism. Uh, the USSA Softball World Series is still on for July 14th, and the Sports Corp has uh, the D2 Regional and national cross-country events in November. I, I'm just glad that we were able to get the OBC tournament uh, in before um, the pandemic took hold. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for anybody. Okay, uh, another area of focus was government operations. And even though I'm coordinating uh, the, this subgroup, the collaboration between Mayor Winicky, um, County Commission President Jeff Hatfield, uh, Sheriff Wedding, Dave Rector with the Building Authority, um, and many others uh, has been uh, extraordinary. Uh, the judges as well. Uh, the Civic Center, our employees are going to come back uh, May uh, 26. Um, however, the Civic Center will be open to the public June 15th. Uh, there will be precaution, precautionary items um, involved, uh, wearing masks uh, and temperature screening uh, before entry. And just a few things to mention, government operations di didn't stop um, when the pandemic started. Uh, there are many online services that the city uh, put together and we have a whole link, uh, we have a link to them at, on this site. Uh, everything from um, water and sewer utility to permitting, code enforcement, uh, all of those things uh, have continued. Taxpayer relief, uh, you know, thankfully, um, the state uh, in the governor's order, it, one of his executive orders delayed property tax penalty payments, uh, our payments uh, were delayed. So um, that is something that I believe a lot of, um, a lot of taxpayers are taking advantage of. Um, the Evansville Water and Sewer Utility uh, put a moratorium on shutoffs. Uh, we had a re uh, report of that earlier today and um, quite a, a large number. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's one of those um, uh, items that, that government took place or took hold. Uh, code enforcement, delaying some of the, um, the, the fines to be paid and cleanup. Um, many things that are happening within um, government. Government understands that with the pandemic, uh, we need to be as flexible as possible. Uh, investing federal resources. You know, thankfully, the federal government has stepped in and um, helped, but uh, the city took it upon itself to provide some 
additional assistance to small businesses and social service agencies. Uh, specifically, small business assistance. April 27th, the mayor um, announced $100,000 uh, from an existing uh, revolving loan program to be used for um, area businesses, uh, $5,000 loans. Um, that was approved. And um, thankfully, there are businesses that are in the queue that, that will be receiving some of those dollars. Uh, there's some other federal funds that, that have gone to uh, social service agencies. Um, whether that's Aurora, United Caring Services, Albion Fellows, the uh, list is quite lengthy. And then just yesterday, uh, the, mayor, the mayor's proposal was, was approved by city council for additional uh, money to, be, um, uh, to go towards small business and social services. Uh, this was mainly federal money that has come in because of the COVID-19 um, cost to businesses and so forth. Uh, 500,000 for small businesses um, that have experienced uh, costs or expenses due to COVID-19, and then one, and then the remainder going to agencies throughout the community. And I, I was happy to see that uh, we added 25,000 for the Feed Evansville initiative as well. Uh, special accommodations. Uh, it seems like every day we have a new challenge that that presents itself. Um, you've, made, you've probably seen uh, over the weekend or today some discussion of outdoor seating for restaurants. Um, that, that I, I made the mistake of putting something out on social media on Friday, um, showing what other communities were doing in the country, such as Tampa Bay, um, Cincinnati, and others, uh, and then asked restaurants, hey, would this be something that would, would there be an interest in the community? And there was a significant interest. Uh, so we started talking to legal team, area plan commission, put together a plan to temporarily allow some of these restaurants to expand seating outside to make up for their lost capacity issues. Um, yesterday, we, we, we floated that plan past the health department uh, and some, some of our friends at the state, and it turns out that state regulations uh, prevent our local plan from being enacted. So. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were legal uh, and we had a process in place that would work. So uh, right now, uh, the mayor yesterday was talking to the governor's office. Um, our attorneys um, were talking to the ATC, which is the enforcement arm of the state uh, during the pandemic. And uh, we're also working with the Indiana Restaurant and Lodging Association to try to figure out a plan to help out these restaurants during this time. It's, it's simple, it's, it's common sense. So um, more to come on that. Um, the other thing uh, that, that a lot of people, if you're like me, you have a lot of yard waste, sticks um, and leaves that are piling up. Uh, our spring yard pickup was delayed, postponed uh, because of issues. Uh, soon we'll have new dates for the spring heavy trash pickup, um, which will also include uh, yard waste as well. I think this might be the last area of focus. Um, the last one that, that was added uh, as we started to get going, um, we, mayor, the mayor recognized that food security uh, was something that was um, an unintended consequence of all of these efforts and of the pandemic, uh, especially when with school being out. Uh, wanted to make sure, ensure that every resident had access to a healthy meal. I love this graphic. Um, I couldn't um, quite get all of the organizations uh, in the entire community or regionally uh, on it, uh, but it just gives you an idea. There are so many organizations in this uh, city and region that are involved uh, with either food pantries, food sharing, uh, grab and go. Uh, there's lots of different services. So I, I, I don't have all the organizations, but we did bring all of them to the table under this uh, this, this area focus. And one of the coolest things that has been developed so far is a food relief map. And this is an interactive Google map with all of the sources of um, uh, food in the community in terms of whether it be a ministry, um, an organization like Tri-State Food Bank, uh, EVSC, so forth. Um, Candace Chapman and some others put together this, uh, this, this map and we'll continue to use it 
and some other resources to make sure that information is easy to access. And uh, individuals who are experiencing um, hunger for the first time um, because of loss of job or being furloughed, um, you know, it, it's hard to navigate this system for the first time. So we want to make it easier. Uh, and there's challenges ahead. Uh, it, you know, you would think that the business assistance uh, area of focus would be probably the busiest, uh, but got to give it to um, Lisa Vaughn and this, um, this area, this group, because the work that they're doing every day in terms of making the boxes or um, handing out meals and so forth is amazing. Um, but there are challenges, such as uh, this summer with all of the, the camps that have been um, unfortunately canceling, um, you know, it's, it's inevitable. Um, and those resources and those, those uh, programs that provide that nourishment to children throughout the community, um, we need to make sure that um, there's a substitute or somebody steps in to fill that gap. Uh, the, other, the other challenge is regional coordination. Uh, the Welburn Foundation pulled together a group of, uh, group of these groups and, and wants to not just focus on locally, but regionally as well. So if anybody has done anything regionally, you understand that getting everybody together um, is not easy, but it is very productive and worthwhile. And I think that is it. I simply want to say um, thank you to everybody that is involved on the task force. Um, they are all listed on the website, uh, and it seems to be growing every day um, simply because it um, is a great community effort, and the mayor is providing great leadership through this entire process, and we're just uh, happy to be part of um, uh, making sure the community is ready. And, and it, it, this whole effort seems to be evolving um, every day. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide an update. And Amy, hopefully I didn't go too long, uh, but I'll take some questions if they're, if they're easy. 